Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. There we go. You kind of you you mentioned this uh, rock star photo of you uh, in black and white. So sure enough, it's a black and white shot. Your chin is in your hands. You're kind of holding up your head a little bit. You've got this winning smile. You're looking about one, like you're looking off camera. You're wearing these super uh, slick, um, nice glasses. You know, you say your hair is unkempt, but it looks great. You, have, you know, it looks all fantastic. You. you have this nice sort of plain um, uh, button-down shirt. It's a beautiful moment because there you go. Like you're just kind of looking off camera, looking genuinely. It's like it's not a fake smile. It's like a, you can see in the eyes and whatever that, that it's like a real smile. Like she ca- she must have made you laugh or something, and captured. Uh, and you have great teeth. Look at those teeth, crazy. So. So you, you, you kind of gave us the prelude of, of the photo, okay? Now, I have to kind of learn about you and somehow talk about how to make every second count. Uh, or another phrase that's really that's come up this past week that's really great is, we're not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> uh, which I is, love that. <laughs> isn't that amazing? It's an Australian term. It just means like, dude, we're not here to fuck spiders. Let's just dive in, you know? Okay, so so you're in radio. I was in radio for a long, long time. Okay, so do tell. You have a fantastic uh, voice. Thank you. Um, so how? So why were you getting this this headshot done? And what's the what's the, the context of this? Sure, I needed a, an updated headshot because I was nominated for uh, community service director of the year for a. Oh gosh, I forget. The, I think it was the Media Alliance of Houston is some award show that the Houston radio and TV industry has where it's a lot of glad handing and I don't want to say circle jerking, but it's the first thing to come to mind. I <laughs> nominated for several years in a row, never won. Um, okay. That's okay. Uh, I can be like the Buffalo Bills of of uh, the that particular award category. And if you don't know who the Buffalo Bills are, they 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 went to the Super Bowl quite a few times in the 90s and lost every single mm-hmm. time <laughs> right oh so, yeah so but okay so you've been nominated several times though yeah. which uh it's true when you're not winning you're like oh what's why am i not breaking that little barrier yeah. but why why that particular category yeah one of one of the many 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 hats that i wore when i was on the radio was that of community service director I was also the midday host and creative services director. As community affairs director, it was uh, that that's essentially a fancy title for Sunday morning show host. Uh, it's a time slot that nobody really pays attention to in the radio world. But when I was voluntold to host it, I decided to make it my own and turn it into a destination show. Lo and behold, I built some fantastic relationships. Uh, one of it, one of which was a relationship with my publicist who you know because he arranged this interview his name is Mickey Mickelson with Creative Edge got it yeah got it amazing okay so so okay so take us from somebody who's not in radio who's not you know in that world okay you're running this Sunday show you're building it up into into a destination show which doesn't like I, I can repeat what you're saying and compare it but I don't even understand so so t- take us into that world yeah what is that world about uh, Sunday mornings tend to be the least listened to times of the week. And so community affairs, it's sort of that obligatory Sunday morning programming. I'm not sure how they do it uh, in your neck of the woods, but uh, we have with the FCC, we have certain guidelines and obligations that we have to maintain in order to keep our keep our license. And I say our, I'm no longer with that place. I, mm-hmm. I, own my, I run my own podcast agency now, but uh, at that time, that was a uh, part of my duty was to host that show and as community affairs director uh, would ensure that we were upholding our duty as uh, a servant to the Houston area. And that Sunday morning show, we would have uh, nonprofit founders and executive directors. We'd have mom and pop organizations. We would talk to cancer nonprofits, uh, arthritis the blood bank uh yeah, just just to highlight 
yeah. what they're doing for the community. Okay. Okay, so one person we had on the podcast earlier. So I've had a few people from Houston. Cool. Oddly enough. Um, and then one, he's a friend. He And he lived, uh, was it Hurricane Harvey? Yeah. Yeah. So were you working at the radio station at the time? Yeah, and that was not fun. That was not. What does that mean? That was not fun for anybody. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, do you get hurricanes wherever you are? You don't get hurricanes, probably. <laughs> Over here, it's called typhoons because this part of the world are typhoons. Now, I'm originally okay. I grew up in Montreal, Canada, right. so we had lots of uh, full-on blizzards. <laughs> yeah. I live in Hong Kong right now, and uh, over here, the hurricanes are called typhoons. Okay, and so there was a mega typhoon here a few years ago that just completely. Cr- demolished all the trees and really cr- created serious damage. Um, I know about uh, the power of natural disasters. So, you know, my wife and I were in the 2004 tsunami, mm-hmm. right? So we're in the water when that happened. So I know all about the power of water and everything. So walk me through, I mean, we don't have to get stuck on that. I mean, we can go, we can use your photo. I'm just, I'm just following the rabbit hole. Yeah, sure. But What's that world like in ter- cuz it's a, it's a, like it's a service that you're really giving to the community mm-hmm. and how are you propped up in that in that like how did you fall into that Yeah so with, with being on the radio and I'm sure my TV colleagues would agree too when there are people who have no power no running water they have TV and radio specifically radio because it, that's well. I mean, it's digital now, but even in a in a situation like that, if you have a battery powered radio, you can flip it on and listen to listen to us cut in from Justin Bieber and Billie Eilish and just talk nonstop about um, what the situation is like. Did we go from Cat Five or whatever it was at that time? Did we? Are we now? It, in the are we in the clear? Uh, what is Center Point Energy saying about getting your power on? What uh, is there a boil water notice in the city of Houston? If so, what what areas do that, does that affect? Uh, do we have power in Cyprus? Do we have power back in Galveston? Galveston got demolished. Okay, what about Texas City, which is only a few minutes away from Galveston? So it's maintaining the up, maintaining upkeep of the most um, the most up to date news and information Mm -hmm. that people that people can't really access if if their internet's down sure so so your i mean in terms of of your life energy uh interest you know where you put your 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 effort is really other centric right like first of all the radio is essentially kind of a community service to a certain extent, if you become a, a personality, then that feeds your, your ego, which is the, it's a positive uh, reward. So that's quite obvious. But there's something fascinating about sort of like you've dedicated a huge part of your seconds of your life to, to serving others, to really to giving back within the community directly, even indirectly through radio. And now you're, like, you have a podcasting empire uh yeah so the podcast agency is called speak podcasting and it's it's called uh it's spelled s-p-e-k-e it's named after uh my dogs sparrow and zeke zeke sadly passed away at the end of 2020 due to i was about to say due to covid uh during (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh (laughs) <laughs> uh, it was a crazy year yeah i really did one on me can you tell uh no but he passed he passed at the end of 2020 uh due to some uh, unfortunate circumstances he took a turn for the worst but he lived a really good life we had a really mm-hmm. really solid run with him he was 13 we had him for uh over 10 years um mm-hmm. a, an amazing dog and and uh, my family and i love animals and and um so the naming the company was uh, sort of a nod to to not just them, but to the voiceless uh, in society, and and oh. what I what I hope to do. The larger mission of my company is is helping people to understand that they can use their voice and and not rely on institutional um, institutional means of communication. Uh, so it's sort of instilling, uh, taking my my traditional my 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 traditional institutional background 
and implementing it into a 21st century vision for decentralized media communications, st st stuff like this. I mean, th this uh, 20 years ago, unthinkable, unthinkable, unthinkable. Yeah. You know, you and I, unthinkable. Uh, you mm -hmm. could be sitting in a in a studio that costs fifty one hundred thousand dollars, and speaking with one another, it would probably be by phone, not Zencaster. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, you like I, I love these conversations because you know I meet you I, as you're speaking. I've got you uh, in video, you know, very this nice room, and then I've got this still of you looking really great. Thanks. And uh, and then you drop these bombs like the like you're yeah you don't sound ambitious at all. <laughs> what? Amazing. So okay so so okay so let's go back. Let's rewind the tape back to that moment where you said uh, and it's called speak yes speak podcasting. So speak podcasting. So let's rewind the tape back to that that second right where at one point in the universe. There wasn't this thing called speak pod podcasting, and then suddenly in your head, the, the, all the all the switches flipped, and then maybe maybe I'll go in that direction. So, what was the catalyst? Whew. Um, there's a lot to unpack there because at the end of 2021, I had made the decision to leave radio, and and I left a, a great career. Um, I had a long run. You don't spend 16 years at a radio station um, if you suck. And mm -hmm. I had a great run. I was very lucky. They took care of me. But I got out while it was still fun. And at the end of the day, you don't have your employer doesn't have to tell you the words you're fired to let you know that you're. you're yeah, you're done. That yeah. you're done. So I left and. Um, rejected an offer, but I fulfilled my contract. And then I thought, well, you know what? I'm Freddie fucking Cruz. I'm going to find a job. <laughs> find a job and I'm going to show them. And did I find a job? No. 400 applications, uh, 50 plus rejections, a handful of interviews that didn't pan out. And I'm like, all right, this sucks. It is, um, it's mid May. And I told my wife that I would find a job by the end of 2021. So six, seven months later, um, I decide to hire myself because I'm just that damn good at accepting rejection. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Well, look, I, I hear you loud and clear uh, with, the, with the pandemic. Uh, for me, it's been a good solid three years of rejections and trials and flying between Hong Kong, Savannah, Georgia, Toronto, Vancouver, just chasing chasing work um i hear you brother <laughs> should we move on to the next photo sure absolutely i was just going to add to that um it's yeah a, do it it's a long flight from hong kong to savannah uh yeah it took a <laughs> while <laughs> so is life really a gift really can you make every second count that's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.